Okay, so now we're going to go over <clears throat> the segments after Gugugoon. So the route up to this point is pretty straightforward and pretty much everyone's doing a similar route up to this point. Um, the only difference might be you might choose to do jellyfish fields uh, from cow from a like you would do Calabungi earlier and then you would go leave the rest for right now. So like some people do that route. Um, but besides that, pretty much everybody does like the same route up to this point in terms of like what levels they finish. But at this point, the route can kind of diverge in a lot of ways. Um, you can pretty much do Rock Bottom, Mermelair, Sand Mountain, Downtown in like any order you want. The only thing is you need to do Kelp Forest like after all of those levels, basically. Um, but in this route, uh, we're going to be doing Rock Bottom first. So when you're finished with Goo Lagoon, you should have 26 spatulas, 13 socks, and at least 42,000 shiny objects. Um, so we're going to warp to on top of the pineapple. And we're going to trade for 7 so spatulas that. from Mr. Krabs. The reason we're doing 7 is because we're leaving so the 8th crab spatula for when we do the crusty crab. Because there's an animation skip we can do so if that. we can trade for a crab spatula while we're grabbing the crusty crab spatula. So yeah, basically, so you need to buy spatulas from Mr. Krabs here until you have 33 so in this route. I don't usually count the spatulas. I usually just wait until so the spatula counter says how many I need to have. That. But once you have 33 spatulas from Mr. Krabs, we're going to do Squid's House now. My movement is awful. We're also going to be getting the sock here. So jump, hit this, jump, hit these, jump, hit these, double jump, hit that, hit that, jump, jump, hit that, or jump, hit that, jump, hit the tiki's, and then jump until the spatula spawns. And then once the spatula is spawned, we're gonna jump over the spatula and hit the final object in Squid's house at the same time to overlay the animations. Just like that. And that saves like 3 seconds. So once you grab the sock, you can pause and warp to on top shade shells. Pretty easy. <clears throat> okay, so now we have rock bottom. So using the trampoline to enter just uh, does a taxi skip. It's not super necessary, it's just free time save basically. Welcome. Okay, so once you're in the level, come over here. You don't necessarily need to cruise boost here, it's just faster to do it. Uh, so here's a new strat that was found semi-recently. You can jump over the sleepy and hit him to go straight through him. It's pretty fast. So you want to use a cruise bubble on this button here. So that spawns the spatula, and then we need to get a cruise boost on this rock. I prefer this side of the rock. Some people do this side, and I don't know why. This side is way worse. This side, you can do it. You can do it on this side if you really want to. You just need to pick a side of this rock to learn how to cruise boost on, because this rock is pretty awful. So once you get the cruise boost, you gotta come over this way. Be careful on these platforms to not fall off. Make sure you talk to Bubble Buddy because we need to get a warp from him. Jump down here, get the sock. Jump through here, get the other sock. Uh, you can jump over to this part right here if you want to be safe, but you can make the jump from here if your cruise boost is fast enough. Get the spatula. Pretty easy. And once you're in here, you want to get a cruise boost. Bash slam up here. 
Uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can come around the backside and just jump up and then dash slam if you want to. If you can space it better than I can, that is. Alright, I missed it again. You can do it that way. You can come over here and bash up this way if you want to. Uh, but either way, you need to make it over this trampoline. Jump across the gap with it. Okay, so first I'm going to show the way to get to Museum with Spongebob. Which is harder, but it's pretty fast. Jump across this gap. You get the sock over here. And here, as you approach the shush tikis, you need to be holding neutral on the stick. Because the shush tikis search for... They search for stick movement. They don't search for, like, just movement in general. They only search for if you're using the control stick or not. So as you're approaching these tikis, you need to make sure your angle is straight on, but you're holding neutral on the stick. And then, space of bash to get on top. I missed it, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to go back and set it up again to try and show it. So you need to set up your angle here. Okay, that slope there, I usually jump over that, but I guess I'll show jumping over it instead. Ooh, that was scary. So you can jump up like that and then bash. So when you jump off the shush tikis, you need to jump and then move the stick. Or else the shush tikis are going to go down before you can get the jump off. And it's going to be harder to make the jump up here. Um, if for some reason you miss this, um, you can just kind of wait for the chuck, bash right here, and then jump up as a backup strat. You can also bash up this way and then jump back around and use the box if you want. If the chuck hits you and you lose your cruise boost, you want to hit him with a cruise bubble to get rid of him and then get a cruise boost on this box right here. Um, but either way, you want to get up here. This is kind of precise, so I don't like going for this. Okay. So once you're up here, you want to switch to Sandy. Come over here and get the scratch one. Okay, so now I'm going to show route number two, which is how to get to Museum of Sandy. Which is easier. So after you get the spatula... So let me just show the route fluidly again. I guess. So we come over here, miss the jump, so you would get the spatula and then you would warp to swing along spatula. So when you do that you spawn as Sandy. So you want to come over here to where the sock is. Come up, get the sock. And if you see that rock with the stone tiki on it that's straight ahead, we're going to be aiming for that. So when we try to jump over there, the chuck is going to notice us and we have to juke out the missile. So you want to be prepared for that. So just kind of follow the movement that I'm going to do right here. You wait for him to shoot the missile and then you just kind of go to the side. If the chuck hits you off, the backup strat, you can jump over here and activate the box like that. And just kind of use the box to get up instead. So that's pretty easy to do as Sandy. But either way, when you make it to the museum, uh, you want to enter as Sandy. You can do Museum of Spongebob, but it's a lot harder.
So you just kind of want to jump up the wooden frame like that. Get this checkpoint for safety. So now, right here, we're looking at the middle tire on this first laser wall right here. You want to wait for the tire to go through the laser wall onto the far side of it. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to be ledge grabbing on the side of the tire to clip through the first laser wall. Which is pretty, like, new players always have trouble learning this, but once you, like, know where to ledge grab in the tire and, like, where to aim for, and how the cycles work in here, it's honestly pretty easy. So, bam, bam, bam. You want to aim, like, a little bit to the left here. Ledge grab the tire, come over here to this one. Make sure you grab these red shinies because that activates an invisible checkpoint. Okay, so I did not mean to do that. You want to like go along the railing here and then activate the tiki's. Because if you do it the way I just did it, you're going to get hit. So here we're looking at this tire because we want to click through this tire, the one right in front of us. So you need to look for a visual cue for like when to jump. So I jump like right here. Wait on the edge of the laser wall. Do not chase the tire. Okay, I failed it. So I guess I need to wait a little bit longer. Let's try that. I haven't done Sandy Museum in a while. So right there, you need to wedge grab the tire on like the far side. Come get the sock. Very important, get the sock. And then jump down, get the spatula. So I'll teach how to do this as Spongebob now, I guess, but I highly recommend if you're new to just do it as Sandy. It's very easy. It's not all that much slower. It's only like 20 seconds slower. Come over here, cruise boost. Which is something that I can't do apparently, come on. Okay, so once you have your cruise boost, you can come over here, bash, slam, and get up. That was very sloppy, I'm going to try that again. Bash, slam on like the little spokes. <clears throat> so if you see this, um, the electrical thing right here, I don't really know what to call them. Usually I call them like anodes, I guess, or nodes. Um, so basically, you want to slam onto one of the spokes that are hanging off of the node. But your angle can't be, like, perpendicular with the spoke. Like, Spongebob can't be, like, perpendicular to the spoke. Like a plus sign. Or else, I think that's what causes something to happen, where you can just kind of, like, slam and just warp to the bottom. And it's really dumb when that happens. So you need to kind of slam on the spoke at a bit of an angle to make your way up here. So some people do this clip starting on like the edge of the railing here, but you don't even need to do that. Um, the way I learned how to do this is with the camera like straight on like this, but most people learn it with the camera like sideways like this. Because you can see the lasers you're supposed to stand on this way. Because you can stand on the lasers that are like stagnant, like these ones aren't moving, but there's ones that are moving like up and down. Alright, well I missed it. Okay, so right here, you need to look at this tire. When the yellow part comes back through the wall is when I jump up. So you need like the yellow part on the bottom. Once that pokes through onto your side of the laser wall, you jump up to the first laser and then let the damage hit you up to the second laser. You don't want to have to jump up to the second laser yourself. 
because it's gonna ruin the setup if you have to do that. See, like that's what I was talking about earlier. It just warps you to the bottom. Alright, well, I missed it. This part right here is honestly like the hardest part of this segment of Spongebob. Because if you're missing cruise boost here, the cycle is always going to be off. That's what it should look like. Yeah. You need to ledge grab the side of the tire right before it's going to come through the wall. So that, like, I guess I didn't really explain that. Like, when you're ledge grabbing, you don't get affected by, like, knockback and stuff. You just kind of stay in place. So you will, like, stay ledge grabbing on the side of the tire as it goes through the wall. So the spot where you ledge grab on the tire is very important to this trick. But once you're over here, you just cruise boost. You want to jump down here to this teeter-totter. The easier strat is to kind of wait on this side and wait for it to go all the way down. Um, you can do this a couple ways. So you can spin and then just run up and go underneath and bash over the railing to get over here. Uh, by the way, if you ever fall down, just come over here and go back up this way. You can do it this way, uh, except you wouldn't hit the lasers. You can do it like that. You don't even have to wait for it to go back the other direction. You can just kind of spin right here and go under. Which is faster, but it's a lot harder. So like, you can- you would fall down from above and land like right here and spin and bash up. But you would actually make it. That's like the ideal strat. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it, because doing it this way is a lot easier, and it's only like one second slower or something. Uh, so whatever way you prefer to get up here. So you get up, point the camera down when you touch the spatula. That way the camera doesn't make you spin around in circles. Because if you spin around in circles, you can get like the blue screen effect that I talked about on Shady Shoals. And that can ruin you because we need the sock as well. So once you get the spatula, you want to jump on top of this railing, bash, slam onto that red thing right there. For whatever reason, you can just stand on this red thing. So you want to slam on the red thing. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet. I don't know if you can even do it up here. Um, but if you slam onto, like, objects in the stage, as opposed to, like, just the ground, and you hold A, you actually get a higher bounce. Like, if you notice how high I'm going on the wall, I'm going, like, above the ground with when I'm holding A, but when I'm not holding A, I'm, like, not even going above. So if you hold A during the slam, you slam bounce higher. And that kind of helps right here. It's not necessary, but it helps you get up a lot easier to where the sock is. Okay, so once you have the sock and the spatula from museum, warp to slip sliding away. Nice job! You can cruise boost here and it saves like a second or two, but I don't recommend it. Alright, so once you get the spatula, warp to across the trench of darkness. So I'm going to show off three different ways of doing the spatula. 
this is the fastest way. Okay, as, assuming you don't mess it up like that. <laughs> Okay, my damage cycle was bad. I have a video about damage cycles, if you're interested. Um, but yeah. That's not gonna have enough distance. Okay, so this is Sleepy Skip. Uh, this is taught in the Any% percent tutorial, I think. And if it's not, it's no big deal. It's not necessary. It's just a little bit faster if you know how to do it. It's a similar trick to Oil Skip. This is actually the only, like, bash boost that's in this category. Um, but yeah, Sleepy Skip is, like, a second or two faster than, like, the other methods of doing this. The spatula. Um, but yeah, you would come up here, get the spatula. And you want to jump down here. There's an invisible ledge right here. You will not fall down. There's an invisible ledge here. Jump up, get the sock. Um, so that's one way of doing this. Here's the second way of doing this. You come over here, get a cruise boost. This is actually the method I recommend you learn for this category, because it's a lot easier. So you want to do a spin up here, like I mentioned in earlier parts, you can spin and get rid of downward momentum. So yeah, you just space a double jump spin slam off of that corner of that cliff up here. And you can make it to the platform of the spatula. You can point the camera down to kind of see where the point is if you want. If you can manage doing that. I use claw for stuff like that. Like controller grip claw. Um... You don't necessarily need to. You can also bash and make this easier. Uh, but yeah, you would come over here and bowl before you touch the spatula. Because if you don't, then you're going to fall off and you can't get the sock. Alright, so that's way number two. And now I'm going to show the third way. This is a lot slower than the other ways, but... It's pretty easy. So you just come over this way. Jump over to where the sock is right here. And now you need to jump around here through this little like corner in between the pipe. So you want to come up here, stall on this platform a bit. Make it jump over here. So the reason this works is because the piston moving up is actually giving you a boost to your height if you jump at the right time. So you want to jump like while the piston is still going upwards to get some height. Uh, make sure you bowl before touching the spatula again so you don't... F uh, actually, you don't need to for this route. Because you already got the sock. But yeah, that's way number three. That's about, uh, I want to say like 10-ish seconds slower than the other methods. But it's pretty easy. Um, so that's the end of Rock Bottom. We should have 40 spatulas and 19 socks by the end of Rock Bottom.